Today, we'll be speaking with Professor Greg Ibe, who is a renowned businessman, an entrepreneur par excellence, a chancellor and founder of Gregory University Utu, a philanthropist and a humanitarian. Let me start by saying thank you so much for honoring this invitation. Thank you. So how did your journey begin as an entrepreneur? Well, well since we're social distance, can you bear with me? Okay, to, go ahead. To uh, okay. Your question is uh, my journey. Yes. I'm simple and short. Uh, um, entrepreneurship uh, is, uh, has something to do with culture, family, and all that. Also, uh, management, you said, can managers be born or can managers also be trained. Some school of thought believes in different views. It, it must be born or it must be trained. Some also manager says it can be combined. Uh, and then when you are born with it and then when you are trained with it and it's a combination effort, it means that you have to give a better result. So for me, uh, entrepreneurship runs, or I'm, I will say, uh, 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 as an entrepreneur, it runs in our family because my father was a teller, and then also my mother, uh, when she got married to my dad, also was trained as a seamstress. Wow. So all of them became uh, tellers at the same time. So but at a point in, uh, in my father's career, the British police decided in Kaduna that since they come to sh shop to mend their dresses, that they want him to now be part of uh, establishing police teller in our faith. So that's how the, the, she, my father moved and my mother started taking care of the shop. So my mother would be there in the shop until my father comes back in the room. So I grew up uh, knowing how to sew. So it becomes family. And then when the economy keep biting harder, and, and, and more children were coming around us, so they become pertinent that you have to learn new skills. So me and my mother, we, 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 we involved in new skills in our family businesses. We started to sell a car on the street, and then from selling a car on the street, we had uh, also our shop in you know, uh, It's difficult to show every after the work. People were not having enough money for fashion or whatever. So we were continuing, and I was also busy in the park to load things for people and make money and go back to the house. So we continued until I started selling bread in this college in Ubu, and then also polishing and shining shoes and boots for uh, people in police training and all, because I do it in our house with my father. At each stage of one's growth, I'm seeking out on what I can do to give me money to put, uh, at least to help me manage my economic space as a little child and to contribute to our family. So what I did was, uh, by the grace of God, who, who helped me a lot, I turned my disadvantaged position to my strength because I have no other person to help. So my whole strength obeying my mother and learning new skills, selling bread in the front of our compound. Whatever I see that could create money, I will get my hand dirty to make sure I do it. So when my pairs are busy playing about or doing something wrong, I'm busy getting involved in, in one of these uh, various activities. Even the teachers identified me in school to be more hardworking. So when there's uh, something to be done in school. The, the principal was now say they should identify me. So I became a sports person. I became a weightlifter. I became a 100 meters relay race. Anything that you want to do to achieve results. So I was uh, primed from day one to go into ventures that will lead to uh, achievement of results. And uh, I continued like that until I read the accounting and had my ACCA part two. There was no money to continue. So I, as an accountant trainee, 
I went to a few work, chartered accountants, YCC holders to go and work. From there, I got a job with the Israelis and then uh, as an account officer. So I was able to to change uh, the fortunes of the, the establishment by adopting cost and material uh, accounting management system. So, and it was manually done. So I was able to man Abia State University construction, Imo State uh, Airport, um, sent to Abuja. I did Federal Secretary at Gariki. I did Former Foreign Affairs, where I was safety is. So I did these things and I kept up at the age of 23. So I had a, a higher task that is not commensurate with my age, but I was I'm doing it because I'm prepared to achieve results at each time. So that's how I continued. And then, um, Remembering that I have a lot of skills, I became an electrician. I started to produce paint uh, to to repaint Osegetere Kariki. And I started doing a lot of things. Anything I see that could uh, save money for company, I will get involved in it. So I come with ideas. And uh, my management to like the that my ideas works and they were adopted. And it was, they were giving me a lot of bonuses. So I started to grow. Um, in, in, in entrepreneurship, which I'm a professor of entrepreneurship, we say that you can be an entrepreneur and, or entrepreneur, I-N-T and E-N-T. So there are two different ones. Starting with I says that while you are working in somebody's establishment organization, you can come with ideas that can shape that environment, that establishment, so you become an entrepreneur. But when you are an outside person who comes with ideas that creates activity, you are an AE entrepreneur. So these are things that I teach and them. Uh, I felt I could deepen that knowledge of my skills uh, that I used in doing for United Nations Development Program 42 hands on training models on 42 skills that we used to establish skill uh, prison centers in all the local government in Nigeria. So I did it in the third and fourth country program of UNDP. And then that uh, kept me going. But the only thing I think is about what do you do to the next young boy, next human being to have skills? Because it's only with your idea and the skills you have that can uh, put food on the table. And they're uh, using my slogan, turning my disadvantage to strength. And I know how bad and how hard it has been for the people of the third world, especially the uh, Nigerians and the youths of the world in developing nations. They don't have anybody to help them. So I normally say, gentlemen, turn your disadvantage to your strength. Don't use your strength for evil vices. You have a strength. God gave you uh, eyes, head, and you are easy. You can be the best first person. So when they said that ah, what is in sports, I'll tell them I'm a weightlifter. I tried it to make sure I get a living. And they also guide my thinking as a loner. It's a loan game. So I, I all my thing is since nobody's helping me, I've perfected the act of starting something and concluding it because it will give me a result. So that's what I, I wish that every youth in the world should I realize that that's an he's an embodiment of God's own giving talent. But if you don't work on your talent, you don't go anywhere. And if you don't do not your disadvantage to your strength, I'm sorry that you have a critical problem coming on your way. There are various ideas, there are various opportunities you can scan around your environment. There are something new that you can do to make a success. So I did all these things and then uh, you can't believe the skills that I have in my fingertips of even producing candles and uh, uh, using paraffin to do a lot of job on uh, producing Vaseline on seasonal during hammer time we flood the market with Vaseline and then we do candle because there's no nepal so people must buy a candle so if you sit at home and somebody is thinking and you don't have opportunity of coming with ideas or product so you hunger will kill you but I refuse that our family should go down with big confessional rings with my mother because we are nine in the family with father and mother 11. And then you can consider about all the house helps and the relations that craft the house over 50. Somebody need to eat. So we started a hotel, um, uh, uh, daily food supply to construction sites. 
So what that's what I advise mothers that instead of sitting at home, look for where people are constructing, provide just you can use four thousand to five thousand and uh, take food to where construction workers are, you can make 10,000. The profit of the business, your children can depend on it and it's the profit, but your capital is there, you continue. We used to sell uh, granite, mineral, banana at the high court in a way. Or I, God knows if they bring me to, before those people that I used to sell, high court judges, people that come for one case or the other, they won't even know that I'm the one that was doing all those things. But because I turned my disadvantage to strength, that's how I became an entrepreneur. Can you tell us some of the principles you've applied over the past decades that have helped you to build up successful businesses? Well, the first law of myself is absolute belief and trust in Almighty God. Um, from secondary school, I, got, I went into scripture unionism. So what molds your life is all about your Christian life. In fact, parents, the first law is teach your child the way of the Lord when you pose him now depart from it. So it's critical to parents. So most of the youth who father and mother did not show them the word of the Lord have great opportunity to seek the face of our Lord so that they will get the blessings. And then the Almighty God said in the in our book of the Bible, we say, um, I will bless your handiwork. So anybody that will not handiwork has no blessing. That's what the presupposes. So your job is, how do I get this handiwork? What are the blessings God gave to me? In fact, the next law is, uh, what is the outcome or achievement? What could you say that leads to achievement? If you want to uh, uh, define achievement, and you say achievement is a cause to what? So a class, or the young youth you are telling will be looking at achievement is when I buy a car, achievement is when I finish university, achievement is when I do this, achievement is when I do that, uh, master's degree, achievement is when, no. Achievement is equal to talent plus preparation. Wow. Talent plus preparation. Talent plus preparation equals achievement. So which means it's not the education you are talking about. If you're a welder, for example, you decide to say, okay, I'm going to learn welding or uh, cinematography. Uh, your, this is your team. And then you perfect this act. And then every day you are, you are with this camera. And every when you finish one item, you drop it. There are many functions of this camera. If you have chosen to do this job and mastering it, the same thing to every other to every other job. If you're a footballer and you don't train, keep on training. If you're a little hairdresser. You don't train, you don't look at what is new in the system, and you want to continue to maintain the whole system. Well, you are going to be a failure. So it is your talent, loss preparation, that will give you a cost to achievement. And when you achieve, you will be a proud man. Um, that's the, the overall belief photographer. Over 80, 90 years ago, just a photographer, taking pictures of Auburn, his works were paid for by Smithsonian in the US. American government paid, returned the photograph and helped to develop the, uh, the museum and all. But the family became rich when the man had died long ago because he took pictures. His pictures. He became, the family became money bags. So that's how uh, I, for one, uh, I believe. These are the principles that gave me up to succeed in life, turning my disadvantage to strength by improving on my talent on a daily basis. Wow. I must say that's quite insightful. Can you talk about some of the challenges you experienced in your business? Challenges. Like I said, 
when you don't have Abraham as a father, you don't have uncle, sister, nephew, uh, 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 whichever way that could come and talk to you one afternoon, night, or give you money, and you think you are lost in the world, forget it. There's only one man who created you, who knows what you'll be tomorrow. That's why even if there's no father and mother, the person still comes up. If he works well, he becomes what he wants to do. So I want to tell you that all challenges are normal. But how do you conquer these challenges? I had nobody to help me. In fact, uh, in Barclays Bank, when I was eating my money uh, from there to send money overseas, so when you call a bank manager looks at you and tells looks at your big head and asks you, how are you writing ACCA? Where are you getting the money? Get out of that place. I'll keep on insisting. So I work hard as a medicine, as a pediatrician to bring this money break. He said, will you pass the ACCA? Will you accept me? I said, sir, do I want to repeat my money? Until they refused me finally, and I had no money to start paying. In backless bank program. So if people keep it to discourage you, brothers, uncles, when you tell them where you are going, they will be laughing at you. Stay there. Stay there. Keep on loitering about. You want to go to school. You don't want to go and learn a job. So each one that tells you, you keep on going. I learned surveying, but I met a lot of problems in surveying in knowledge. So I said, no, I have to put my educational pursuit. And then when you don't have money, you think your uncle should pay. Go out there. You have leg, you have hand. Go and work with a construction site. Make money. Help a carpenter to work and you make money. Everything to make money is around you. But offer yourself for service. So, you make it. so challenges for me were nobody was there for me. So that takes me to the next question. Let's talk about the unemployment rate in Nigeria. Right now, we have so many unemployed people, and I think there is a need for lots of people to go into entrepreneurship. So what do you think can be done to encourage more people to go into entrepreneurship? Well, um, if I use a particular issue, uh, World Bank and uh, the UN ratio, 44% of Nigerian population are all youths. And then do you both normally say that Nigeria or the African continent is more of a youthful uh, population? And uh, if, if you take 44% on our own, we have 88 8 million youths, 88 to 90 million people are youths. So what you are now having uh, is uh, 56% of uh, elderly men, our fathers and others uh, that occupy this space. So uh, if you check further what's going on in Nigeria with the, uh, the, uh, the ratio from uh, the National Board of Statistics and BS, you will see that we must have increased uh, up to 56 that I use because this answers as I suppose that virtually all the youths are on the street, so there was nobody left behind. So which means it's the larger population anyway, and they can dictate where to go. So our youth being 88 million sitting idly, and out of this uh, 88 million, 60 percent seem to be not bound. And each day I keep talking that something ought to be done fast. So if the only industry that we seem to be growing fast in Nigeria is education. So I'm now saying that the federal government should give instantly uh, a financial aid to all the youth that have intention to go to the higher institution. Because the only thing again that you can hand over to the majority of the youth is education. So why not give 500,000 as scholarship for you to go to university. So what that will mean is, uh, is clear from my work, my work. You can increase it, but let's take uh, 500,000. Pay the school every session 350. Give the child 150 to manage in the school. It is a borrow sum. 
And if the child needs to complete that form, he has his national ID card, he has his uh, passport, whatever information, PPN, and he has three characters. He has three characters. Your parents, if they are alive, your traditional ruler or whatever, and then also your guardian. These three persons, because you are not within the tax pay, because remember that from 18 years we become a taxpayer by the law. Because you are in school, you are accepted. The tax net will get the three uncles who are taxpayers. So they will they are responsible to guarantee you and you have this money two million naira for four years course. And when you now start to work, whether privately engaged or it's you have a bank account in Nigeria, is it not? You must pay this money. This is a revolving money. And you know that tomorrow you might have to guarantee for your son or your brother. You'll be paying tax and you'll be refunding the money. So that your son will benefit from it. It is too early. Nigeria has so much money to, to take this youth back to the school and then build a more intellectually balanced youth. And then you can use it as a way to develop their mentality, to develop the culture of believing in one Nigeria. Instead of where we are today, some are seeing Nigeria as one, some see Nigeria as not. So it's always a uh, one thing or the other, we're going backwards every day. So I believe that the 8 million people uh, who are our youths, including me, by the way, because uh, I'm still within 47 to 60, so I'm 50 something. Uh, so I'm still a youth, uh, but a grandfather of two kids. So I'm not, uh, I'm a young grandfather. So now they need to create jobs for them. The, the north is, uh, we have a lot of youth there that are really doing nothing and the little subsistence level they are living, we need to improve on it. We have all those papers written and then for me, I'm the consultant to ECOWAS, so I'm busy going from one country to ECOWAS to look at the developmental pattern, to look at what to do to youth from various regions. So this is what I'm doing for ECOWAS now. So in my country, I've put a lot of my effort in my country. Most have been abandoned and they were not engaged uh, well so far. But I'm exporting our thinking to West African countries and we're getting positive results. So if uh, anybody calls me and asks me what to do about the use, I will give what is right and uh, will definitely absorb them into what is going on. I did the public service reform of federal government. Uh, during my presidential ambassador, and then we did a lot. We opened the space for employment of people, and then the why leave people in the public service? The Constitution of Nigeria says that if you have worked ten years, you become a senior citizen. There are many people that are in public service that there's nothing they are doing there again. So you can retire them voluntarily or otherwise, and give them their pensions, and let them train them and they will start a small business. It gives you room to employ the younger ones who left school without a job. That's why people are ready to repeat NYC five times, not just once. Give them option. Do you want to repeat NYC in STA? They will tell you yes. What is inside that 30,000 they are paying? So if you know that the majority want 30,000 every year, why not create a platform for job for them? For that guitar, let them contribute to economic development by the skills they have. But these things are not available. Promotion of agriculture seems to be abandoned because you've not made that agriculture to resemble what entrepreneurship will normally bring to, to give the the, the, the the attitude, what you call attitude, not change, uh, to tell them that why going on do a white collar job? That you receive thirty to eighty thousand every month. When, if you if you talk to one or two people or save money from doing your hair in hairdressing salon or smoking and drinking, keep on saving. After six months, you buy the old chick that is uh, 
a 24 in a, a crate, and then you, you take one in your backyard in grandmother's uh, you know, village home and you train those kids, the, those chicks. If you have mortality rate four, you can as well sell every three months after 90 days. You sell those chicks. If 20 is alive, you sell for 2,000 two or 25. How much are you making? You keep on increasing, and then you tell them the time you'll be making 120,000, 200,000 a month instead of doing a white collar job of 80,000, 90,000. So, the only way that this must work is entrepreneurship. And then in, 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 in entrepreneurship, we say that entrepreneur has controlled 92% of every functional economy. Anywhere you see, Hong Kong, America, it is the problem. So if you convert 8 million people and you take uh, 40 or 50 percent of 8 million people they, and give them the, what it takes to be entrepreneurs, there will be a lot of money on the tax net of Nigeria. The economy will start to prepare. We are leaving these businesses of agriculture to subsistent level, where our old mother will do small acreage. Tell the boys that just to be trained as an extension officer, you are living on money. Agric extension officer, you are money. And then you see the value chain coming in there. Well, anything has value. But when you take those activities chain out of them, all of them sit back and be looking and doing urban migration, and uh, all of us are stuck in the city. There was a day to navigate to my house in Abuja, I did three, four hours. I had to go to a port road and go towards the railway station. I had to cut through life camp. I was trying to navigate to come in this entrance. So everybody was heated up. I was crying because I know I have solution uh, that could keep our youth busy. So that uh, until we are called upon. Are you interested in politics? Because <laughs> you just talked about so many policies that I believe can be implemented. I am a political animal, <laughs> and moreover, I still want to offer my services to my country, okay. both at the state and federal level. So, but now I'm going for Abia uh, for 2023 by the special grace of God. I, I just have to uh, to put my best to see uh, I add my own thinking to development. Okay. If I can do it for my country, mm -hmm. I can I can do it for. Uh, the wonderful people of our state. It's been a wonderful time having you. I know there are so many youths out there that wouldn't mind a piece of advice. The youth of Nigeria, I am part of you. And what we should be doing is to have more people to mentor all of us. This story I've said now is just a microcosm to what I have passed through in life. If you don't have anybody, coming to help you and you are right there in the village thinking of what to do. I assure you there's something you can do in your village. If you're in Abuja or the major cities in, in Nigeria, there's something around the environment that you should look in that you can be a provider within that village. That is not a for my day. That has nothing to do with wrong prices. There's something that you possess that I don't have and I can never have it because God gave it to you as your personal talent. So I want you to find out what you are, and then you, you have uh, the, uh, the, the producer of this program with you. If you need me for any advice, just call on me and call on her, and then I'll be ready and out there to make sure that you succeed in life. Because if you succeed, I feel proud as a person that I spoke to you, and you are listening to this program today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Ibe, for your time. I must say it's been an honor talking with you today. That's the much we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Please, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also follow on the other social media platforms at C Creates. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.